Chairman. Director uh, Haynes, you have acknowledged Russian interference with our upcoming elections. In another area, I am wondering whether the intelligence community was able to identify Russia's use of social media to put out messages that the Maui wildfire was caused by government or uh, that, that uh, the Maui community should not trust FEMA. Was the intel community able to identify Russian uh, use of social media in this regard? And th this is an important question because I can, uh, of course, as we uh, experience so many more of these kinds of um, massive um, climate disasters or natural disasters, we can expect that Russia will use social media or some other ways to, to uh, create instability and questions. Yeah, thank you very much for the question, ma'am. And I, I, um, I don't remember, so we will get you an answer to that. Yeah. Uh, I know that, for example, the, the uh, uh, Microsoft, for example, was able to um, discern that Russia was doing this with regard to the Maui wildfire. So I really would like you to address this for me. Now that we know that there's a huge need for um, people to uh, to be able to work in the Intel arena in, in the Intel uh, environment, and so both of you, we know that there's a huge need for that. And for uh, General Cruz, uh, the Pacific Intelligence and uh, Innovation Initiative is working to create a local skilled workforce to meet DOD's demand for cyber and intel professionals in Hawaii. There's a huge need in Hawaii for uh, people with this kind of, of background. How is this working? And uh, how um, are, are you also resorting to AI and, uh, and other means of, of uh, making your intel collection uh, more efficient and effective because you know there's a huge need for people uh, with this kind of back, background, but we don't have those people yet. So can you respond to those two questions? Uh, certainly. Um, as mentioned, I've done several assignments to include uh, 2016 to 2019 as the Director of Intelligence uh, at uh, US Indo-PACOM and Camp Smith, uh, and uh, personally participated in several recruiting events with local universities and uh, in, in partnership with the National Security Agency uh, and DIA, lots of recruiting even down into the high school level to build some local recruiting and local uh, workforce and then in partnership with the intelligence community working to develop uh, centers of academic excellence and a recruiting pool as well. So it is absolutely uh, critical. I do not believe we'll be able to fully man the intelligence requirements on island uh, without no. doing local recruiting and being able to develop the workforce and the local partners have just been absolutely tremendous. So to your, to your answer there, it's critical to do. We are investing in and additional STEM and cyber pay where those kind of skill sets are required. But to your point, we have skill sets that we need uh, all across the board. On the uh, artificial intelligence question about how do we become more efficient, I think what you'll find across the intelligence community is that we are applying AI, and in closed session we can also talk about counter AI, but how can we be the most effective and the most efficient? I'd be happy to walk you through a couple of very specific examples that the Defense Intelligence Agency uh, is currently doing. And then right now we're looking at how do we partner with NGA, NRO, NSA, and DIA to bring almost a system of systems to be able to queue uh, and be much more effective and much more efficient in uh, how do we collect and how do we assess what we're collecting. Thank you. Director Haynes, uh, you acknowledge that uh, we have cr critical infrastructure in the private sector, i.e. our electrical grids that are subject to um, uh, cyber attacks. And you noted that you spent quite a lot of time in this area talking, I suppose, with the state people and uh, the private sector who provide these kinds of grids. But I'm, and, and you, you noted that good cybersecurity practices, such as something as relatively simple as updating the, the um, passwords, would be very helpful. Do you know if this is happening? And, and do, do you uh, partner with, uh, with, for example, the Public Utilities Commission in the state of Hawaii and other agencies that actually regulate uh, what they, they, these entities do, our electrical, uh, other power entities? But I just want to know, something as simple as updating passwords, do you know if this is happening? Yeah, so it, we are not working directly with um, 
uh, sort of the utility companies across the United States. It's really DHS in the form of CISA and the Department of Energy and others that are doing that. And we support their work by trying to make sure that they have the intelligence they need to provide warning, but also then to better understand what the questions are that are coming from uh, utilities in this space. And my understanding is that they are working very hard with them to improve their cybersecurity practices, patch vulnerabilities, deal with these issues. But it is just more an observation from our perspective that as we're looking at the attacks that are occurring, particularly against industrial control systems, Systems in the country, that um, the vast, vast majority of them would have been actually prevented if it weren't for those kinds of cybersecurity uh, practices not being what they need to be, and you know, instead using default pra um, passwords, weak passwords, not patching the vulnerabilities that are uh, publicly available, and so on. So is the Department of Homeland Security and basically the Energy Department who would be the people that I should ask? And yeah, CISA within the Department of Homeland Security, um, and and we can give you uh, we can work with your staff to make sure you have yeah exactly who is talking to who that sort of thing, and if that's helpful for Hawaii. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Senator Hirono. Uh, I will uh, recognize Senator Scott, but I will depart shortly for.